Seeing as the last time I actually made a review for any episode of Raw or anything in general, that was basically February. I believe February or January. Therefore, I'm a little rusty. I'm not going to be as concise. I never was concise, concise in the first place, you see. Already my first fuck up of the English language and the rapish of any phonetic ability. Anyway, we're going to start off with the beginning. In the beginning, there was DX and their return. And it was full of nostalgia and shit, which is the basis of this episode of Raw. There was a lot of nostalgia, as expected, because it is a celebration of 1,000 years of chaos, basically. But me... There's something about me that I hate celebration episodes. In any franchise, including the WWE related, any time that there's this celebration of an accomplishment, every time people are patting themselves on the back as a product, I don't really like it a lot. However, here I actually enjoy it. Like, the best example for me to describe it is any 10 year anniversary thing or any 5 year anniversary thing where they release a product, whether it be a video game, DVD, movie, you just celebrate it. Or a buck. I'm not big into people patting themselves on the back in front of me as a cash in. But I actually enjoy this episode. Now the DX reunion was interrupted by Damien Sando, and at first it was, seemed like it had no plot. But then Damien Sando came to critique everybody again, and basically he knew he was coming in to get an ass whooping. Yet he said that he wasn't gonna get his ass whooped as. Another dumbass victim possessed and going by the rulings of the WWE's lazy writers, but as a martyr. And then he got his ass beat. As expected. I'm not sure what a self fulfilling prophecy that was, but I guess he just wanted to prove that he was a dickhead. And then we got. This triple tag match between Sheamus, Sin Cara, and Rey Mysterio versus Alberto Del Rio, Dolph Ziggler, and Chris Jericho. Who that was my first bolt of excitement or emotion when Chris Jericho was there because I'm all about that Y2J lifestyle. I'm a Jericholic, and I'm not ashamed to submit it. And that was pretty cool. I knew that one of them was going to screw the other one. Because so far, 40 minutes into this program, and they're already throwing every predictability into the buck. And it happens. Ziggler basically punched Jericho or something. Punched him, kicked him. All I know is that he did a little bit of a move while all that action was going on. That cost them the match, and Jericho basically took another bump, another loss. Which is the thing, the only thing I hate about Chris Jericho, he's always taking bumps for other people. And while this is okay, seriously, Jericho has taken a bump to JTG Trent Beretta, I believe. And Evan Bourne, those were all tremendous failed projects. Jericho shouldn't be taking bumps to anybody, but he does it because he's a great guy and shit. 
And there, it's one of those two things I hate about Jericho. The other thing being that he always has to keep bringing up shit like his victory against Stone Cold and The Rock at the same night. I mean, that's an 11-year accolade. We don't need to hear it every time. But other than that, he's like my favorite guy here, so... Props to Jericho. Then, the only thing worth mentioning after that is basically AJ and Daniel Bryan's wedding, which was actually pretty cool. Because, for one thing, they brought that pimp character out, and I didn't know about that manager, honestly, Slick, or whatever his name is. So, I'm introduced to a new character, I like his gimmick, I like his style, and that's always good. I don't know everything about the WWE. I just got into it again two years ago. So I don't have an encyclopedia knowledge of it. And they are bringing a bunch of encyclopedia facts into this episode especially. That's another thing worth mentioning. But this wedding thing, it got interrupted by Vince who announced that AJ would be the general manager of Monday Night Raw and maybe SmackDown. And that was cool and all. You know, it was not. I don't really know why that's going on. And AJ brings Converse everywhere. She brings Converse to her own wedding. I bet she's gonna bring Converse to her own fucking funeral. Then The Rock interrupts it, then CM Punk interrupts it, or the other way around. Rock announces that he's going to be the guy that faces a WWE Champion at the Royal Rumble. So there's another thing that they're going to push ahead for The Rock. And his ambition was to become the Champion anyway, so that's a great time to announce it. Again, then Daniel Bryan does a bitch out because his wedding was basically crashed. AJ curved him. And he got rock bottomed after bitching out on a rock. Speaking of which, I don't like Seamus. Seamus, to me, is basically there to... This is a tangent because I could have brought up Seamus when I brought up the triple threat match, but Sheamus is basically a main eventer that appeals to kids with Tourette's and are constantly getting high on sugar. And I only know of those kids in the PG era of the WWE. I never see of these kids anywhere else. It sucks. I mean, I hated kids before ever all my life, but this made me want to punch elementary school kids on the face. What else was interesting and worth mentioning? I mean, I know that from that promo with Stephanie, HHH, Lesnar, and Heyman, that's... Stephanie Mann is basically the one that has the balls in the family. Basically, all that steroids must have shrunk in Triple H's dick to a peanut size. And now he's the bitch of his own fucking wife. And you know what? His wife is pretty fucking scary, so... I don't blame him. I mean, she constantly has that weird... Thing with her mannerism where she just can't stop flaring her fucking nose all the fucking time. She looks like she takes steroids and every time somebody says, well what about the awareness policy? And she goes, well you know what, you can suck my dick. I bet she's the kind of girl that likes to say suck my dick. Yeah, she is the kind of girl that likes to say, suck my dick. My second mark out moment, basically, is 
don't know if you can call it a mark out moment when I saw Lita again because of like her theme song. And Lita beat Heath, Heath Slater's ass. I, I was about to say Heath Ledger, but I guess. I don't know which one of those things is dead though. Heath Slater's reputation or Heath Ledger's life. One of those is more dead than the other, but I don't know which one. <sighs> what else? What else? My third one was when Undertaker returned. But I don't know why all these jobbers thought that they were going to have Undertaker's number. Not just Undertaker's number, but the Bird of Destruction's numbers. I mean, I know they have the strength in numbers, but... Jobbers rushing in on, as lemmings, that's not going to mean much. Basically, both of them were just throwing right hands and throwing them out the ring, and then they did their finishers in the last two pathetic assholes remaining. Which I think was Hunico and this other loser not worth mentioning. I honestly believe that Undertaker should have turned them all into druids like in that SmackDown vs. Raw game, so that they could be released like that. Because they're a waste of money, man. They're a waste of capital. If you're going to keep anybody, keep Trent Beretta, keep Yoshitatsu, keep all these guys that you know have some ability. Don't keep these generic ass characters. Ooh, Mexican nigga. Another Edge clone and basically another terrorist character, which is what that Indian nigga is supposed to be, even though he's from Canada. What else? What else? Well, the only thing worth mentioning after that was basically the fact that. Cena and Punk got into another fight, and I thought this was taking forever. This was what I was waiting for, because every time Cena and Punk get into a match, it's great, man. And this was a good-ass match, but I honestly think it should have been a little longer. They were filling it with so much bullshit that we just wanted to see this match. Now, I, I don't care that eventually... Charlie Sheen and Daniel Bryan are going to face at Wrestlemania. Charlie Sheen, I thought he was dead. That's a sick thing, because in this episode, I thought half of these guys that were here were dead. I was waiting for Randy Savage. And then I realized and remembered that he died, too. So, Randy Savage died. And he was the only person I was waiting for. Nostalgia-wise, in this... 1,000th episode, so... Mine... This video's gonna get a lot of dislikes, isn't it? But this was a great match. Had it been 20 minutes... Longer, I was expecting this match in... 10.30, and to go from there. It would've been great. It would've been my pick for the number one match of the year. And the year isn't even finished yet. I know it's not going to be a big list of great matches. But then something happened. Big Show came. And Big Show basically interrupted this match. Making Cena... Waste his opportunity. I mean... Technically he won via DQ. But he doesn't win the title. So... That sucks for him. What's more, The Rock came, and then The Rock, because Big Show pounded on Cena, Punk was hesitant, but then he tried to capitalize, and he failed. And then Big Show came after Cena again, and Punk just stayed there watching like a vulture. Hold on, hold on, it's gonna be... I'll do a part two of this video. Stop.